Move to the right and then left. Move to the right and then left. They are the opposite. Step to the front and go back. Step to the front and go back. Step to the front and go back. They are the opposite. God's story, the Sermon on the Mount. So part of God's story is about a sermon Jesus gave on the side of a mountain and what he did afterwards. And it goes like this. One day, when Jesus saw crowds gathering to hear him teach or see him do miracles, he went to the side of a mountain. It was near the Sea of Galilee, across from a place called Capernaum. From there, he gave a message all about God's kingdom and his love. We call this message the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus started by explaining who would get blessings or favor from God. He said the most blessed people are those who are poor, sad, or humble. He said God shows favor to people who are just or treat others fairly, and people who are merciful or show love to those who don't deserve it. He said the people who are pure, who bring peace, or who get hurt for doing right will be rewarded for their actions in heaven. In other words, the people who love others, even when it makes them seem weak or unimportant on earth, are like heroes in God's kingdom. Anyway, Jesus went on to explain that when we believe in and follow him, it's our job to show everyone else who he is by loving them. That means going out of our way not only to comfort and help our friends, but also forgive people who hurt us, love our enemies, and give to people in need. The thing is, Jesus didn't just talk about love, he showed it all the time. In fact, right after giving this sermon, Jesus spent the rest of the day helping everyone he met. First, as Jesus came down from the mountain, a man with a skin disease called leprosy knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Usually, no one wanted to be around people with leprosy. But Jesus touched him and said, I am willing, be healed. Instantly, 
the leprosy disappeared. Then, when Jesus arrived in Capernaum a bit later, a soldier said to him, Lord, my servant is in terrible pain. Right away, Jesus said, I will come and heal him. The officer said, Just say the word from where you are, and my servant will be healed. Jesus told him, Because you believed, it has happened. The officer's servant was healed. A little later, Jesus arrived at his disciple Peter's house. Peter's mother-in-law was there too, sick in bed with a high fever. Jesus touched her hand, and the fever left. Later that evening, many other people who were demon-possessed or sick came to see Jesus. He brought relief to all of them. At the end of the day, Jesus got into a boat with his disciples. Suddenly, a fierce storm came out of nowhere. Waves began crashing into the boat. The disciples realized that even though they were in the middle of a giant storm, Jesus was fast asleep. They shouted, Lord, save us! We're going to drown! Jesus said, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he told the wind and waves to stop. They did. That day, Jesus taught a lot of people how to love and showed them what love looks like. Whenever somebody took their sickness or pain or fear to Jesus, he helped them. Everybody who met Jesus got to experience his love. And when we love like Jesus, everyone who meets us can feel his love too. And that's the story of the Sermon on the Mount. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Crowds gathered. Jesus went to a mountain. He gave a sermon. He talked about God's kingdom. He told us how to love others. Jesus didn't just talk about love. He showed it. He healed sick people. He saved people who were demon-possessed. He calmed storms. He showed his love to everyone he met. Our job is to do that too. And that's a part of God's story. Well, goodbye to you little tofu nuggets. It's not me, Carl. Welcome to Opposite Day and welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now, once again, welcome. Hey there, hi there, ho there, kiddos. It's good to see y'all. Now today, I have something very special planned. I need your help in my super duper secret mission. A mission so secret that even speaking it can bring so much danger to myself. Do you accept this mission? Yes. Perfect. The mission is this. Get back at my boy O'Shea. Now hold on. Hear me out. Everywhere I go, there's this big dude named O'Shea, and he just likes to push my buttons. You ever have someone like that? Someone that just knows how to grind your gears? Really knows how to burn your toast? Really just mashes your taters? Well, that's this guy. That is O'Shea the Bully. And I need your help getting back at him, all right? Hey, Carl, I just got your text about uh, O'Shea. Are you, are you okay? Uh, yeah. Really? Because it sounded kind of bad. Never better. I mean, he tricked you into eating a gallon of dog hair. <laughs> that's enough, Andy. I mean, everyone saw it. Your Maymaw saw it. It's all over the internet. Please close your mouth. Believe it or not, it was your Maymaw who actually sent me the video. Enough! Come on, man. Jeez. Now, I just need to figure out what to do with my worst enemy. Oh, yeah. And speaking of that, I actually got a letter with our big idea on it, but it's missing the last word. Again? What's it say? It says, our enemies help us learn to blank. Our enemies help us to learn blank? Huh? How about our enemies help us learn to fight? I don't think so. All right, how about our enemies help us learn to conquer? King of the world! Conquer! Not quite. How about our enemies help us... Hold on, Carl. Oh, man, Andy, that was gonna be the one. I just know it. So what is it? Sorry, I was just gonna ask you if you remember what day today is. Um, yeah, it's Beans Day at the supermarket. Right, I was, wait, what day? Beans Day. <laughs> you know what Beans Day is, right? 
Beans Day. It's where you bring a can of beans to the supermarket and then you get a free can of beans. Beans Day. That makes no sense. You bring them a can and then they give you a can and it's counterproductive when it makes no, okay. No, Carl, it's opposite day. And? And that means that the last word of our big idea might be the... Beans? No, not beans, opposite. It might be the opposite. So instead of fighting or conquering our enemies, the opposite of that would be... Be? Do not say beans. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay, well, let's look at what the Bible says. All right, let's do it. All right, I'll be reading out of Luke chapter six. Here we go. But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies and do good Hold to- Hold up. Did it just say what I think it said? What? Did it just say, love your enemies? Um, yeah. How does that make you feel, Carl? How does that make me feel? Are you kidding me? You ever feel a slap in the face, Andy? Um, I don't think so. I... Ow! Well, now you do. And that's how I felt after I read you have to love your enemies. I have to love O'Shea? Are you kidding me? Easy, Carl. We're not finished with the text. Fine, but that is not a strong start. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. And pray for those who mistreat you. You, you have to be joking me. Is this a prank? This can't be real. Let me look. So, find anything? <gasps> I can't believe this. Jesus just said that if someone slaps me on this cheek, I have to give them this one as well? This is not okay. It's like my anger tells me to do something and Jesus tells me to do the exact opposite. Huh, I guess so. See Carl, our instincts tell us to hate our enemies and to despise those who mistreat us. But God tells us to love our enemies. But why? Why do I have to do the opposite of how I feel? Well, because Jesus did it for us. Huh, well, I guess you're right. Jesus chose to love those who mistreated him and hated him. Even those who denied him were given love and forgiveness. <sighs> well, Andy, I think this is gonna be tough. It might and probably will be, but I promise you it's gonna be how you grow closer to Jesus. And it'll be how you show others that they are loved and valued as well, even if they aren't showing you love at all. Well, hey there, kiddos. It's so good to see you all. Now, today's big idea tells us something that seems mm, very opposite of what we might want to do, but it's the right way because Jesus taught us. So let's say it in a way that's the opposite of quiet, which is loud and proud. Our big idea is our enemies help us learn to love. So on the count of three, let's yell it and wiggle our arms around. Just Please make sure not to hit the person next to you, all right? <laughs> okay, here we go. One, two, three. Our enemies help us to learn to love. <laughs> awesome job, everyone. And thanks for watching Grow TV today. And we cannot wait to see you next time. Okay, bye. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Grow